In this video, we're gonna go over how to create pivot tables in Excel using data model. Oftentimes people ask me which software I prefer, like Excel or Google Sheets. And like anything else, it depends on what you do. So there are cases where Google Sheets can be better, there are things where Excel can be better, and this is one of the cases where Excel can do it much, much better than Google Sheets. And to illustrate this, I have this data, and you can see I have this worksheet here with transactions, and each transaction gives you the transaction ID, stock number, quantity sold, date, wrap ID, customer ID. So for example, if I go to customers, I will have those customers' IDs matching all this customer's data. So for example, if I go to transactions and I wanted to know what state this customer was from, I could just do control C to copy this, go to customer tab and do control F to search, control V to paste and search this particular customer ID. And I could see that that customer was from Washington. And then, of course, you could do this for every other ID, which you could do with something like XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP or something like that. But using data model in Excel, we don't have to do any of that. So let's go ahead and create that report. So I'm going to assume you have at least some background in pivot tables on this. But here what I'll do, I'll start by taking both of these tables and creating a table out of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do control A to select this. I'll go to insert and make a table or control T as a shortcut. It's gonna ask me if it has headers. The first row is column names, yes, okay. I'll go ahead and rename this table under table design. I'm gonna call this table transactions, press enter. So you want good names for your tables because you're gonna basically recognize your tables using their names. So that's your transactions here. I will probably change the design here too. Doesn't matter that much though. And then I'll take that second customer's worksheet, this one, control A again create a table from this, has headers, press okay. Once again, call this one customers, press enter. And if you want a different design, go ahead and choose that. So once I have both of these with their tables and their names, now I'm gonna go ahead and create a pivot table. So I'll go to transactions tab. This is the first table. I'm gonna click inside of this. Now, if you have no idea what Excel tables are and how they work, I do have very good videos covering tables. I'll link to those in this video description so you can watch those. But what I'll do now, I'll go to insert and click pivot table. So you either wanna click on this button on top or if you click on this arrow, go ahead and click from table range. And you can see it picks up on that table name transactions, which is what I called this table. And the important part here is that before I hit okay, I'm gonna check this checkbox that says, add this data to the data model. So I'll go ahead and do this, hit okay. And it's gonna make a new sheet. The first time you do this, it can take a bit for it to take care of adding to the data model. And you can see we have our typical pivot table layout. So if you want it total for quantity sold, you can of course grab that quantity sold and drag it to values and that should give you total. If you want a different function, you can always right click, go to summarize values by and choose a different function. But right now sum is fine. And then you could obviously break it down by other things. Like for example, if you wanted total by stock number, you could drag stock number to rows and that would give you total amount by stock number. But in my case, I wanted this total by state using the data on the other table. So I'm gonna take the stock number out of here. So I'm gonna drag it out. So if you look here, it shows the name transactions, the name of the table. Now, if I scroll down, you can see that's it. This only shows me just transactions table. But here on top, we have this two tabs now because we're in data model. One is called active, which shows our active tables. And then we have all, which is gonna show us all tables. And you can see here, we have this transactions bold and customers a little 
grayed out because it's not active. But I'm gonna go ahead and open this customers tab. And what I'll do, I'll drag that state to rows. Now, as soon as you do that, it's gonna give you this. So you can see this is not accurate. So it gives me the same grand total for everything. Because once you now involve another table in this report, you have to create some relationship between those tables. And you can see this pop-up shows up here. You can either let Excel auto detect it or you can create it yourself. So I'm gonna create it myself. I'm gonna click create. And then I'm gonna start by choosing the main facts table, which is transactions. And then the secondary related table is gonna be customers. And we'll talk about what that means. So we have this first table and we have this related table. So then I'm gonna choose that lookup column. So in this case, customer ID and customer ID. So it's called customer ID in both tables. That's the column we use to link these two tables together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hit okay. And the moment you do this, you get your totals. So no lookups, no X lookups, no view lookups. We got the relationship established between these two tables. And now we can use any other column to break down this report. So if you wanted to now maybe also use the gender column or one of these other columns in your report, you can simply just drag it over. So I'll go to the sheet one. I'm gonna double click and rename this to pivot. But here on the right side, we have our fields. And if I scroll down and find, see we have transactions and we have now customers. And from customers, I could now, for example, also include gender columns. So I'm gonna take that and drag it to columns. And you can see we got gender in columns and state in rows. So at this point, we can use any column from both of these tables and it should work just fine. Now I'm gonna take the gender and drag it out of it. Now, if you do need to modify that relationship that you created, you can do that by going to data menu and under data menu, there's this green little button. And here we have this relationships. And that will get you to your existing relationships. So you can delete this, you can edit it, you can do whatever you like. For me, this is fine, so I'm gonna keep this. So you can see that was very simple. Now I do wanna show you also, what if I now want to add another table to this report? So maybe, well, I have this transactions and in transactions, I have stock numbers. And now I want to basically go grab some data related to that stock number from maybe this products tab where I have stock numbers and maybe brand information. And I would like to use that in the report too. So what I'll do, I'll just simply create a table out of this too. So I'll do control A, go to insert, make a table, again, the same thing. We'll choose some design and add a name for this table. So I'm gonna call here products. And then at this point, if I go back to pivot, you can see that in all that products now shows up too. So the moment I convert anything to a table, it's gonna display here. Now, if you don't get that showing up under all right here immediately, you may need to sometimes, depending on your Excel version, just refresh this. So you can go to pivot table, analyze and refresh your pivot table. And at that point, you're gonna see that that new table shows up under your inactive tables. So now I can just go ahead and open this table, drag a column like brand to columns or rows, doesn't matter. And then once again, it's gonna ask me to create a relationship between those tables. So I'll do create, I'll choose my table transactions and then product. And in transactions table, we have stock number, which is what points to stock number in products table. Excellent, so I'm gonna press okay. And just like that, now we got brand in this report too. So now we got brands at top, states on the left, 
and quantities from transactions table. So we basically use three different tables to generate this report. And I didn't have to do any lookups or anything else. And because of the way tables operate, if you later on add more data to your transactions table or customers table or products table, all you need to do is just come back to your pivot table and refresh it. And it's gonna just pick up on all that new data automatically for you. So one thing I wanna talk about is when I talked about the main table and related table. So the main thing you need to understand about this is in order for this to work, in your related table, you shouldn't have any duplicate matches. So for example, if I have this transactions and I have, let me go control up to get back to the top. If I have this stock numbers here, so for this stock number, 49536650, so this is not the related table. This is our facts table. So this is the first table we choose in that relationship dropdown. Now, what is important is that the related table, which in this case would be product, shouldn't have that stock number more than once in this table. So this only works because you're creating one too many relationships. So in this table, you can't have any duplicate stock numbers. And that same way in customers table, you can't have any duplicate customer IDs. And if you do have them, you're gonna basically get some issues. So it's not gonna work, it's gonna give you error messages. So to give an example, if I go to this table and add another line, and then in this line, I'm gonna use that same stock number again, which if you remember, it's not allowed. You can't have the same stock number twice because this is our related table. So I'll just add some data here. It really doesn't matter that much. So now I've basically created that situation is that that same stock number appears twice in this table. Now what's gonna happen because in Excel pivot tables don't automatically update. If I go to pivot table to update this, I would have to refresh. So I'll go here and refresh this pivot table. See, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get an error message that the column stock number in table products contains this duplicate value for this stock number. And that's not allowed. So these are one to many relationships. So you can't have duplicates. So it's okay to have duplicates in transactions because this is our facts table. So that same stock number here, like this one or this one can appear many times. So you can see at least we can see twice here. There's probably a lot more, but in our related table, it should only appear once. Now, if I go to products and enter some different stock number, which is not one of the existing stock numbers. So I'll just change this. At this point, if I go to my pivot table and refresh this, there should be no issue with doing that. So keep that in mind. So you do have to make sure that in your related tables, there should be no duplicates. But that also should be the case if you were doing like an axe lookup or whatever else you're doing anyways, because if you have two, how does it know which one it is? That's your pivot table with data models in Excel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.